thanks to the Lord. For the Lord is good. And his mercy endures to every generation. Oh, magnify. The Lord with me. Let's exalt God's name. Supervisor Richardson, and I delight to call partner in marriage and ministry. Thank God for her today. And to Pastor Rawls and his dear wife and part in ministry, Attorney Rawls, and to their family, we thank God for them for the energy that they bring to this ministry here in St. Paul, St. Paul's I want to thank Pastor Rawls for this invitation uh, to come and be a part of St. Paul this morning and uh, celebrating family and friends and 141 years of ministry here in this historic community, St. Augustine. Can I just tell you, y'all got it going on? Right. Amen. Amen. And to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we greet you today in the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I was saying to Pastor Andrews Rawls earlier this morning, that uh, I haven't been back to St. Paul in a good while. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was here when you hosted the uh, 11th District Lay Convention several years ago. And uh, I was also here to do a revival, a uh, five-night revival. We don't, we don't have that much religion anymore. <laughs> carry on and revival for a whole week. <laughs> uh, but at the time it was the Reverend uh, Granville Reed. So that shows you how long ago that's been. But I'd like to be here this morning. I want to invite your attention today and let me congratulate you for the good work you're doing. But I want to invite your attention to uh, Luke chapter 17. I want to read verses 11 through 19. And it reads on this wise. Now it happened, as he went to Jerusalem, and that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Now this really kind of tells the story about Jesus processing his way during his living season to Holy Week and to Good Friday and the celebration of Resurrection Day that we sometimes call Easter. Yes. Right. And it says on his way that he entered a certain village and there met him ten men who were leopard, who stood afar off. And they, the ten men, lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when Jesus saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned. And with a loud voice, glorified God, fell down on his face at Jesus' feet, uh -huh. giving Jesus thanks. Uh -huh. And he was a Samaritan. Uh -huh. What do you the saying that they do? Uh -huh. So Jesus answered and said, yes. Were there not ten cleansed? Mm -hmm. But where are the nine? All right. Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this father? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has 
made you well. I want to talk a little bit today about a choice to be grateful. A choice to be grateful. It was a mere four days before Christmas. And according to a study put out that day, I was among the 77% of Americans who had done no shopping for Christmas. <laughs> and with bags in tow, in a full uh, moment of self-awareness, I was fairly certain that everybody was looking at me as I trudged along with the herd with a particularly pronounced and obviously painful deep. Uh -huh. Every stride was a chore. My feet and ankles sore. I was also sure that it showed on my face as I walked several paces behind my chipper wife <laughs> walking in the flow of the spirit of Christmas. <laughs> And I spoke to the first person that seemed to take notice of my misery. Uh, <laughs> and my target was a department store salesperson who seemed not to be busy at the moment. Uh, I looked at him and said, do I look happy yet? <laughs> and without flinching, without hesitation, without breaking his own strap, he gave me a gift with only a half smile. Right, right. Here's what he said. Okay. Happy is a choice. Okay. I mulled over his words. I spoke them out loud to myself. Happy is a choice. <laughs> and instantly made a decision for a happier disposition. Uh -huh at least for the rest of my shopping experience. Uh -huh. <laughs> if not, then what does Merry Christmas mean? Uh -huh. right. Well, we're still only 89 days into the year. 24% of the year is gone. Uh -huh. Do I look happy yet? <laughs> To my department store philosopher, I have a choice. And so do you. Ten men with leprosy, skin condition, for disease, stood afar off and asked Jesus for mercy. Perhaps they had learned that the hard way, whether their affliction was contagious or not, to stand afar off, uh -huh. given the nature of their malady. Right. Perhaps it was merely custom and culture to keep one's distance even when he thought he was speaking to the dead. Right. Here is the sermon I want to preach today in 29 words. Uh -huh. Here it is. Right. Ten people got near enough to Jesus uh -huh. to make the request. One hundred percent of them had a need. One hundred percent of them got what they prayed for. Ten uh -huh. percent chose to be grateful. Uh -huh. That's the sermon. That's it. <laughs> so let me lift up for you uh, just these insights, three of them, from the text. Here's the first. Ten afflicted men made a request of the men. Uh -huh. In other words, they prayed. And here's what we can say about the prayer they prayed. Uh -huh. The prayer was, yes, sir. intentional. Mm -hmm. All right. mm -hmm. We can all, they weren't praying by mistake. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We can also say that it was a prayer of petition. Uh -huh. All right. Prayer prayed in such a way that there was no mistaking who was on the other end of that petition. They directed their petition to Jesus, uh -huh. believing that he could do something. 
something about what they were asking for. And they spoke in such a way that they meant for Jesus to heal him. He is at the church with him. And they lifted up their voices. Uh -huh. um, in other words, Brother uh, Dixon, they had a little hoop in uh -huh. <laughs> The content of their request in that state of awareness to believe um, that they, they needed what they were asking for. Here's what it was. They lifted up their voices. And here was the content of what they prayed. They prayed, they made an appeal uh -huh. for mercy. mercy. Not money. Uh -huh. They didn't ask for power. Uh -huh. They didn't ask for position. Uh -huh. They didn't ask for influence. Uh -huh. They didn't even ask the Lord to enlarge their territory. Uh -huh. They asked for mercy. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Uh -huh. They must have known that mercy. Was quite sufficient to suit their faith. Mercy is what you ask for, especially when you are not quite sure of what to ask for. You hear what we say now? In the way you're blessed. It seems to be the in other words of mercy. Here is something else about that prayer. Not only was it intentional, but it was also inclusive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here's how they said it. Uh -huh. Jesus, uh -huh. Master, yeah. have mercy uh -huh. on us. Uh -huh. I got stuck right there. Uh -huh. The prayer that we know is only me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They had the presence of mind to pray for one another. They weren't selfish, at least not this time. Uh -huh. They were comrades with the same hardship, the same affliction. Doors had been barred for all of them by having the same misery. The ten men represented the fellowship of the suffering. And so they prayed unselfishly. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Uh, think of it this way. A hundred percent of them had a need. A hundred percent of them had the same affliction. Um, there was no one in the group who did not need a blessing. Now, what happens around St. Paul this morning, on this family and friends day, I can assume and everybody here has a need for a blessing. I mean, there may be one or two who just came out of the house. Mama said it would be a good idea just to be in church sometime. And family and friends day is as good a time. Y'all start walking that way. Uh -huh. 
the answer to their prayer uh -huh. did not come in the exact way that they had anticipated. Uh -huh. I mean, a, a prayer for mercy is rather open-ended. Well, so there was no sudden change in their appearance that they could immediately detect. But while they were carrying on in a usual manner, taking a casual or hopeful walk, a change occurred. That's what tends to happen when we walk in obedience. The results may or may not be cataclysmic. It did not happen all at once, but it did become apparent over the course of their moving in the direction of the temple. That a change came. Uh -huh. I dare you uh -huh. to keep coming to church. Uh -huh. And see if your situation does not improve. Uh -huh. On their way to the temple. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. yes, sir. Uh -huh. I assume that it was an experience. That a hundred percent of them, mm -hmm. that something extraordinary mm -hmm. had taken place. Oh, uh, something different had occurred as they began to walk uh -huh. in the direction of their new reality, mm -hmm. in the direction of their new destiny, uh -huh. in the direction of their new opportunity. Yeah. I'm preaching, y'all. <laughs> So I wonder this morning. 
So these 10 men are aware of the divine presence, but only 10% would be sensitive enough to say a thank you, to put, to put a thank you on their lips. The text says, when he saw that he was he returned and with a loud voice, glorified God. to be thankful for. Yes, sir. I mean, we come to the end of the third month of the year, and I'm still here. Yes, sir.
for me that was here before on a river. Yes, sir. I can now go to the temple without causing myself people. Yes, sir. So I'm not praised. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> 